Hi guys, today we are going to make this gorgeous marbled resin clock using an old charger plate that I picked up at the Salvation Army. Hey guys, it's Sarah. Today we are going to be making... Hey guys, Sarah here. Today I'm going to be making a marbled resin clock for my kitchen and it is not going to be a Dollar Tree project because if you don't already have these products on hand that I'll be using, it will cost a little bit to pick them up even though my main item is a charger plate that I did pick up at Salvation Army and I paid $4 for it. It is, however, it looked like was used just for decoration because they still have the stickers on the back. So this is going to be the main item. Then I picked up a clock mechanism and we'll be using this. And along with that, I also picked up, if you can see here, this just has little tiny watch hands. I did pick up some larger watch hands to go with the clock I'll be making. The next thing I'll be using is just some metallic paint. Um, this is a silver metallic. I'll be using some clear cast and I like this amazing clear cast. You can pick it up either in this size which has two 16 ounce bottles in it. It's only $23.99. I did pick this up at Hobby Lobby for that price. Now you cannot use your 40% off on this there. However, to give you an idea of the price difference, if you go to Michael's and buy this, you buy two of the 8-ounce bottles, which is half the size, for $23. So even not being able to use a coupon on this, if I were to pick up the smaller size, which they do have at Hobby Lobby, I just chose not to, you would save as much money, as not, if not more, as using your coupon at Michael's because it is a lot more expensive at Michael's. And one of the reasons I do like this uh, amazing clear cast is because it is a one-to-one -one ratio, so it's really easy for beginners to mix when using resin. The next thing I'll be using is some of my Adirondack inks. And I've picked out four colors, which will kind of go with my kitchen. I picked out Sunset Orange, Citrus, Sunshine Yellow, and this is pool blue. And I also am thinking about using an additive and it's one of the Adirondack inks mixatives and this is in pearl. So the first thing that I have to do is clean my charger. And you do want to be sure whatever you're using is nice and clean because of course when using the paint and the resin on it you don't want anything, anything that's on it will be apparent forever. So I'll be right back as soon as I get this cleaned up. Now I'm going to start out by saying I'm sorry for the glare. It is that time of day when the sun is just shining right in through this window and the shades are drawn and closed and as you can still see it's coming right through. But bear with me here. I think we've still got a really good picture here of the um, charger plate. So what I'm going to do now is just squeeze out some of my uh, metallic paint and I am using enamel, not for any particular reason, just because that's what I had and I grabbed. So what I'm going to start out doing is painting all the way around the outside of my charger. And I'm going to do two or three coats just to be sure we get everything all covered and it, it's, you can't see any of the black charger through it. Now I am going to use my resin and I'm going to mix equal parts A and B and when I'm done with that I'm going to mix in 
the alcohol inks into four smaller cups along with the resin so that we will have four different colors that we can use. The mixative, the pearl, we're going to add in to the mix after we pour it into um, the charger plate. So now I'm just going to go ahead and work things and I'm going to speed this next part up a little bit and you can just watch and follow along. With the resin that I'm using here, it is a one-to-one -one mix ratio, but always be sure you read the directions and check your ratios whenever you're mixing your resins, especially when you're using a new one for the first time. Also, you want to make sure that you mix the resin thoroughly and completely according to package directions. If you do not, the resin will not set up correctly and will remain tacky and you will not be able to finish your project. It will just at that point be ruined. So always be careful to mix your resins according to package directions and mix them thoroughly as well. Now I've got these colors all mixed in, but in looking at the plate, I feel like maybe they'll be a little too pale to really show up well here. So what I'm going to do and this is completely optional, of course, if you don't have mica powders, if you don't want to use them. I am going to pick out some mica powders to add into these colors, and it will just add some shimmer and just some beautiful shine. So you'll see that in a moment as I mix them in. So again, I'm going to speed through this process so you can see the end results. Now I've got these all mixed up and as you can see there's a lot more shimmer and shine. It's a lot more opaque color than it was before. So again this is the pool blue, the sunset orange, the sunshine yellow, and the citrus. And I did add similar colors of mica powders into each of them. The citrus came out just a little bit darker than I was hoping for and it is an interference color. so. That will still add some interest, at least, to the piece. So I'm going to set these back and bring my plate back up. All right, and what we are going to do is just start pouring the colors out onto the plate. Okay, and don't do as I do. You should always wear gloves when you're working with resin. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start pushing it up to the edges and giving it a little bit of a swirl. Okay, and and just kind of moving it around and I'm going to use my heat gun first to try to blow the resin around and get a little bit more interest to the colors Alright, and now I'm going to add in just a little bit of the pearl. Ok, 
Okay, and we're just going to blow that around a little bit. Okay, and as you can see, as it starts to settle, the pearl just has kind of marbled in a little bit to the design. So the next thing I'm going to do is let this sit for just a minute since we've used the hot glue gun. And then I'm going to come back in with a torch and torch it, and that will pop a lot of those air bubbles that are starting to work their way up. All right, now I'm going to come in with my heat gun and just give this a quick torch. You don't want to hold it too long in any one place. You don't want to actually burn the resin itself, but this will get out those air bubbles. Okay, and I will come back in as the air bubbles start to rise a couple more times just to get those out of there. And then we'll go ahead and let this dry. I'm going to cover it and let it set until it's completely dry. As soon as it's completely dry, I'll be back and we can see what the finished project looks like, or the finished resin looks like, rather. Now that the resin is dry, I want to show you a couple things that I learned while doing this. Um, first off is... Be very careful that you get all of your mica completely mixed in before you pour the resin. I have some little um, mica flakes up in here that didn't get mixed in completely on my orange, so those are still very visible and very apparent now that it's dried. So I do need to be sure I don't do that again in the future. I don't really like the way the pearl medium dried. I think it's just adding a haze to it that isn't necessary. And lastly, and probably most importantly, is when I'm trying to do something to match colors, then I might want to have a swatch of the fabric or the colors that I'm actually trying to match. These colors in my head and under these lights do not match the actual curtain fabric that I was trying to match the colors of in my kitchen. Uh, the orange should have a lot more red in it, for example, and I think that would have helped this look a lot better as well as match better in my kitchen. But, lesson learned. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take this out into the garage and drill a hole in the center for the watch mechanism to fit through. And I'm going to take these larger watch hands that I had purchased and I'm going to give them a couple coats of black spray paint real quick. I did try a couple other methods to paint them and I just didn't like the way they were coming out so I think spray paint would be my best option. All right now in order to drill this and mark the center I am going to use some painters tape for two reasons. One to protect the resin from chipping at all. And two, it'll give me a surface to mark on when I find the exact center. All right, now I'm going to use my centering ruler and lay it out. And I'm going to find the center Point by matching up the measurements on either side of the ruler. So right now
Okay, so this should be pretty close to the center right here. So I'm going to go down and drill this and again spray paint the clock hands and I will be back as soon as those are done. Now that I have the hole drilled into the middle of the clock, I am ready to start putting together the actual clock mechanism. So the first thing I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to slide the hook over so that the hook is on the back and where the battery goes in is where the hook is. Next thing I'm going to do is slide the rubber washer over the hook. Then it is time to mount it onto the actual clock face. Okay, so we're going to put that there. The next thing we are going to do is put the brass washer on. Then comes the hex nut. And we're going to screw that, or I'm sorry, we're going to, yeah, screw that on so it's tight. And this will hold the watch mechanism or the clock mechanism securely to our watch face. All right, now that that is on, it is time to start putting on the hour hand. Okay, we're going to push that on until it snaps down, and you want that to the 12 o'clock position. Next comes the minute hand. And that's going to go on again to the 12 o'clock position after we get it snapped in. There we go. Okay, then after that, we want to put on this little ring, this little brass ring. We want to screw that on. And this will hold our clock hands in place. Sure again, these are all up at 12 o'clock. And lastly, we want to put our second hand on again at 12 o'clock. Right now, let's get the battery in and see if this works for us. And there we go. Our clock is working. It's ready to hang on the wall. The last thing I have to do is set it to the correct time. Three, about 3.08. All right, so there we go. And let's get this hung and see how it looks. All right, here we go. Here's our finished clock. It is working just great. Like I said, I wish the orange was a little bit, had a little bit more red in it because you can see my walls are kind of a terracotta color. But other than that, it turned out great and I'm really happy with it. So if I were to do this again, yes, I would just change a few things as far as the coloring and how I worked things. But other than that, it turned out just gorgeous. All right, if you guys could do any resin project, what would be your first resin project that you would start? Or if you have done resin and worked with it before, what projects have you completed? I'm really interested to know. You guys have a great day. I will see you soon. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please be sure to hit that like button as well as share it with friends who may also enjoy it. If you like my channel, hit that subscribe button and when the notification bell pops up, be sure you hit that as well so you never miss a video. And, as always, have a great day and stay crafty.